I'm Shantae and we're in the cold streets of South London but we're having an amazing time because we're here with Ty. For every five steps forward I take ten steps back. I love the music but can't see where it's at. Strictly fast food run-ins. How are we supposed to adapt? How are you supposed to raise kids to that? And I ain't blaming no one, it starts with me. Before heart failure, there's clogged arteries. We were usually on point, no archery. Created to a fault like an art degree, but something happened. It's kind of like a takeover. The sampling law changed, the looping of the brakes over. The corporate, there's nothing pretty about this makeover. Pay for play and now you influence what we say. We even let you walk off with the DJ. It's hard to hear a single scratch on record these days, beside the cliches. Hi, thank you for being in the cold streets of South London. It's a pleasure to be here. It's very random that we came across you on a chair under this bridge and we managed to catch you for an interview. That's just how life is, isn't it? It's it how is. It, goes. It's just, it just works that way sometimes. You know, I always bring my chair out and just stand outside and hope someone will interview me. I think I'm going to do that bit in the summertime. Let's do it, let's do it. I, I will. Yeah, not, not in the winter, not right now, it's a bit... I'll you, leave that to you, that's your thing for yeah, now, it's yeah? Little, it's a little cold. <laughs> Go on. So... Diving straight into the interview. Mm -hmm. Is it fair to say that you're a pioneer of this rap scene for us? I mean, a lot of people recognize you as like one of the founders of, of the music scene for your time, especially. And when I was on my way here today, I spoke to someone and I was like, yeah, I'm going to interview Ty. And they were like, oh my gosh, you're interviewing Ty. I was like, oh, you know? And they was like, what do you mean I know? And I was like, well, yeah, I'm going to interview Ty. So for me, and for a lot of other people, I guess they've considered you a pioneer and a very big feature in the UK, not just the UK, but in the UK rap scene and in the rap scene in general. Okay. How do you feel about that? I feel good about it. I mean, when we started rapping, um, it wasn't cool to be a rap artist from the UK. Um, as far as audiences were, they weren't even, audiences weren't even programmed to really be excited about you and we had to fight through all of that so mm -hmm. for me to be a part of that period of time and then come through to what we have now where people like you know sometimes in american artists can't even get on stage because people just don't want to see it they just want to see themselves you know so to see people like dizzy rascal come and do what they do and know that we kind of open the doors for people to be cool with rapping in certain accents mm -hmm. it's cool and um yeah i feel good about it like the, the struggle has been such that now that I'm seeing what people are doing and everything, and I feel a part of that. Pioneer, I'm, I'm kind of, I was here with other pioneers that came before me. So I would say um, I'm never going to get used to this term legend. I'm never going to get used to it. But I accept it because people say I'm a bit too, I don't, I don't, I don't big myself up enough. Yeah, a little bit too humble. I don't want to say it, but yeah, just being humble again. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I would say, yeah, I'm comfortable with it. Um, I've always tried to be my own self and be an individual. And I think that that's the real thing that probably sets me aside from a lot of other people is that I, I walk on my own. Mm -hmm. I do my things on my own. We make beats that sound and, and work in a particular way. And we influence not just the UK, we influence people throughout the world. Yeah, so, exactly. so that's kind of where I'm coming from. With it. But you didn't always start off rapping and doing your thing on the mic because Rumour has it, you was a little bit of a dancer, wasn't you? Yes, yes. I heard about the farting windmills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that was an early point. That was an early, that was an early point. I, I learned to master my bowels. But um, generally, um, I used to, I've always been a um, person that liked to dance. Mm -hmm. So I used to come to hip-hop dances and dance and, 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 you know, and boogie down and have my own moves. I had my own style of moving, and there were other dancers that had their own styles as well. So we kind of, the, move, the progression into the rapping thing was a, continual, mm -hmm. a continuation of just trying to be individuals and, and gain our identity. You know, you, we're young men trying to figure out how to represent ourselves correctly. So that's kind of where I was coming from on it. So yeah, the fight in windmills was, the, was, was close to the beginning. Well, it was, it, I didn't continue with that, unfortunately. The music that you're doing at the moment, you, you've had a few breaks in between. So you've, you've put stuff out and then you've gone underground a little bit more and then you've come back out and then what's, what's been going on in these times? Let's, let's talk about this. I've never stopped making music. I've been making music since the, since the early 90s, late 80s. I've been, as far as rapping and stuff, I've never stopped. So when people say I've gone away, I've gone quiet, what it is is they don't understand 
that in the UK, if you don't make a certain style of, um, a certain type of kind of uh, uh, music that basically is not necessarily what you want to make, but something that will work for the charts, you can't always be visible. So uh, for, luckily for me, I've, I've made a mark around the world. So when you're not, when I'm not here, I'm elsewhere. So I'm, you know, I'm doing stuff in Germany, or I'm doing stuff in France, or doing stuff in the States, or doing stuff in different countries. I, last year I went to Sudan, and I was the first perform, performer to perform in Port Sudan for 34 years. So I'm always doing different stuff. So it's never, I've never actually stopped. There's never been a moment where I've quitted or I've not stopped making music. Mm -hmm. It's just that I'm the type of person that I don't like to, to, to hog the limelight. Mm -hmm. So people do their thing you do your thing it's your time like I even support I might retweet or big up other artists when they're doing what they're doing and then when I'm doing what I'm doing I'm doing what I'm doing but I don't really feel like you have to be all up in people's faces all the time like I'm like 279 is a great friend of mine and he always cusses he's like you know what you come on my show once or twice per album and that's it <laughs> and I'm like bruv you know what me and you are friends in and outside of this music but as far as being all up in the mix all the time and being up in people's faces like yeah this is my latest freestyle and I'm rapping over my toothbrush and this is what it is no nah, I'm not like I'm not I'm not like that way I'm just not that way inclined mm -hmm. so I don't follow fashion so when I see people following fashion I don't cuss it but I just calmly walk away from it mm -hmm. and that's kind of where I'm at with that and it makes a lot of sense as an individual to keep your own brand going as well absolutely like the follow fashion thing is just ridiculous right now so for me like even the freestyles and I, gr I get it but I just don't see um, the art form being respected enough. It's like all of a sudden everybody raps bars or raps over bars over people's music. But it's like, does, does that teach you to actually write songs? Mm -hmm. Does that teach you to make good music? Um, I came from an era where you had to do everything. And now people are just doing one thing and then they're like, I'm the boss. I'm like, mm, okay. That's, that's true because you get a lot of people making mixtapes and they're obviously jumping on someone else's music. That's and then... It's like Come on down, let's talk about it. <laughs> so for me, the thing about um, when people make mix, a lot of people, there'll be people that watch this and be like, nah man, he's dissing us, da da da. And it's like, no, hold on, wait a second, let me show you something. So with the mixtape thing, what's happening with a lot of people that are making mixtapes, because it's the new generation, that's their first introduction to making music, mm -hmm. right? That's their first introduction to being famous. So they learn how to um, make a song via picking a song that's already been hot. Mm -hmm. But what they lose is you don't actually learn how to find a piece of music and make it hot. Mm -hmm. Because you're always picking up music that's already someone else has made hot. So there's a skill. You, you're never going to be in a position where a producer comes up to you and says, bang, listen to my tune, it's hot, isn't it? Rap on it. Because you'll be like, ah, don't, you don't know what's hot. Yeah. Because you haven't, you don't know, this, there's a skill to that. Mm -hmm. So th just to show you, there's a skill to that, Nas. Terrible picker of beats, Jay Z. Great picker of beats. Different types of MCs, mm -hmm. but the skill to pick a mute, to pick the right music to rap on is, is an actual skill. Now, Nas gets your rights every now and then, but every now, every album, he's always got at least six or seven beats where you're like, fam, why, 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 why this beat? Whereas in Jay Z, nine times out of ten, he will have a beat that you can't argue with. So I say with the mixtape people. Like you guys need to understand that there's a skill to recording, there's a skill to choosing music, and you have to be careful about. You have to you have, don't go back to the basics. Don't just jump in with what's going on now. Always go back to the basics. And YouTube shows you the basics. YouTube has all of the music from before, so you can listen to it and catch a vibe or catch a ride. I catch a ride. Yeah. <laughs> but also touching on the music scene in the UK at the moment, uh -oh. I think. What's happened? No, go, go, go. Okay. Oh, just the troublesome topic. Go on. Um, I think sometimes people get very confused about what UK hip hop is or what the genre of music is in the UK. So for you, mm -hmm. obviously you've come from an era when, when you started the music was hip hop, but now it's kind of, what is it now? It's still hip hop now. So um, a lot of the people that are doing things like uh, Example, that's doing great things, he's, he's a hip-hop MC. Mm -hmm. He's just gone on to do different things. Plan B was an artist that used to rap over hip-hop. He's just, the music industry is a certain way, so he's dealing with that. Mm -hmm. But the thing I would like, like to mention is, hip-hop is not just the music. Hip-hop is not just people rapping on a record. Mm -hmm. Hip-hop is 
the dress sense. Hip hop is the clothes. Hip hop is um, the samples. Hip hop is the music. Hip hop is the break dancing, the DJing, people making beats, all of that. So the problem is the music industry only focuses on one tenet. And the tenet is you need to make a record that people like. So everybody thinks that UK hip hop, the this demise or the increase of it is based upon record sales or is based upon what people do. Mm -hmm. When actually it's based upon the culture. The culture has never, has never disappeared. So when people talk about what hip hop is now, like you're, the question you're asking is, hip hop is still people making beats on their iPhones, making beats at home, uh, listening to uh, rap battles, listening to, um, I, ha I have a thing on the Facebook that we've created called The Beat In, where producers can go and make beats and talk to each other and communicate, which is really big right now. Okay. And um, hip hop is all of that. Hip hop is a fascination with the art form, but in many facets. So it's never just the one thing. So the problem we have in the music industry is the music industry doesn't pay attention to what we are as a whole. It only pays attention to one thing, and we've got to change that back. And how do you feel about your music at the moment in terms of creative control, the stuff you're doing, any collaborations or collaborations you, you're doing or not doing? Right. What's the reason behind all of the music and the concepts that you're leading towards now? Okay, so with the music and what I make, what I try to do is I look on it as a, I look on the music process as, a, as being a composer. So like in the studio, we're no joke. Like if you're coming in the studio with us, and you come in to just lay down and smoke weed and just, you'll be out. In 20 minutes, you'll be out like, at the bus stop wondering what happened. Because we don't play around. Like, really, like it's, when we get in, we're looking at how to develop the music, how to develop the sound, what is the bass sound, what does it need to be, what's the vocal, is this the best hook for it, how do we change it? You know, it's a real um, process. So for me, the collaboration process, one of the reasons why I don't really collaborate as much as I used to is because I find that everybody's self-made now. Everybody's like, yeah, I'm the artist and I need you to rap on a record. And it's like, really? What about the song? What does the song need? Does the song need strings? Does the song need just a hard beat? Does it need a tambourine underneath that snare? What does it need? But if you're just focusing on uh, yeah, me, and then you, and then another man on a record, I remove myself from that, because I'm not, you know, we're not dealing with, the, you're not dealing with the art, the art form is, you've got to make a record that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Wh whatever it is, you know, that this whole f fashion that we have of 10 mans on a rap record right now is a trend. It's not the way, it's not the religion of how it's supposed to be. It's just a trend. And do you think that's them trying to carry the success of a record? Because at least if there's 10 of them on there, there's about three of them that someone's going to like. So it kind of carries the record to where it needs to go. I think it's a cheapening of the art form. Okay. Yeah, it's just straight. I'm going to get, get straight to it. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. It's a cheapening. Like, everything's got cheaper. So technology's got cheaper. The, the music technology is cheaper. The, um, whereas before you used to go to a studio, now you can just go to your house, say hi to mum, go into the room, make a record. Here, the record. You know, so because of all of that, there's a lack of um, attention to detail and a lack of respect for the process. So what you're seeing is everybody just thinks they're automatically made it. It's like, it's like this. Mike Tyson had to do whatever he had to do, right? He had to train, talk to pigeons, buy ears, do whatever he had to do, and he did what he did, right? And then eventually, when he started knocking people out, everyone was like, you know what? This guy's good. Oh, my God, he's the champion. But he, there was a process. He went from being a kid with a lisp, an ugly kid, by the way, <laughs> to being a man that's knocking people out and winning championships. That's a process. Everybody thinks they're Mike Tyson straight away. So there's none of this, no we don't need to train. We don't need to do press-ups. We don't need to do nothing. I'm the champ, you need to record with me. That's the process. So my thing is, I just kind of stay out of that. It's not that I don't believe that people should be collaborating with records and stuff. I think that artists have to focus on being able to make records that are good on their own mm -hmm. first. If you can't make records on your own, why are you putting people on your record all the time? What are you doing at the moment? I know there's an EP on the rise. There's an EP on the rise. Um, this, the story behind this EP is interesting. I did the uh, Special Kind of Fool album with BBE. And then um, after that, because I started to see that there was this kind of real lack of uh, attention to the records that people make on an album, that like you can record 14 tracks, people are only going to listen to the single that the DJs play. Mm -hmm. 
And because I saw that, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna make EPs because if I make an EP, then you've got less songs to focus on. So you have to listen to at least two or three of the records mm -hmm. out of five rather than one out of 14. So I was on this thing of, I'm not making albums again, I'm done. And then I made this album and then um, someone in the States heard about it and then someone mentioned it to True Forts and then True Forts got on it and they were like, yo, we don't even sign EPs, but we'll, we'll, we'll take this if you make albums. If come to us as, you know, because they, they realized, oh, you've got your own sound, you're a producer. I produce with a guy called Drew Hawley, but we are individual producers as well. So a lot of the stuff that like, oh, you want more, haha, I produce those records, but people don't know that. They think I just rap on the records. They don't know how deep you are. No, they don't know how deep I am, Shah. <laughs> Tell them. Ha! Be deep. I'm be deep in this. <laughs> but seriously though, um, so I'd made the, um, the EP and now an album is gonna happen because people are just like, no, we need, we need that Thai music. We need that, we need that thing that you do musically. And, I, and the hip hop is not just the hip hop. It's, it's hip hop, it's, um, it's hip hop with other elements. So I just try and apply uh, a big people aesthetic to the hip hop I'm making. That makes sense? So, it's, so let me put you like this. I'm making music that I want to eventually be something that an elder can listen to and be like, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. I get it. It's not jumping out at me, it's not bitches and hoes, it's not, you know, it's, it's something. And, and that's kind of what I'm trying to ap apply to the music mm -hmm. as well as the words. So I'm not trying to make old people hip hop, but I'm just trying to, to, I'll put it to you like this. There's a quality, a level of music that comes from us in the UK, period, mm -hmm. right? So back from my girl lollipop dun, 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 to that over to soul to soul over to loose ends we've been making serious music omar serious music and i want to continue that mm -hmm. hip-hop wise and i don't and i don't want to be trapped in this kind of backpacker box of oh you can only do this or you can only do that i'm trying to make that music and do you think this is something that's gonna continue to be considered as underground or is it something that is going to transition to overground or what are your thoughts on where this can go because obviously they've got high expectations putting out the ep and the album but who's it going to appeal to i'm not worried about who's it going to appeal to i'm not i didn't make oh we got to talk about this record uh like you never the uh, the first um single and video from the ep we made it in aruba Bunny Bread, Adam Rogers, Big Up You Guys, Cold Emphasis. And we were like, right, we're going to put this thing out, then we're going to put this next video out. Blah, blah, blah. The response to the Like You Never video has been absolutely crazy. Crazy. MTV phoned me up the first day it came out. It was like, we want that. I've never had that in my life. Now, I didn't make the record with that in mind. Mm -hmm. I made the record because I was like, you know what? There's some things I need to say. This is how I feel. That's how I, I wake up in the morning. If I make a beat and I write to it, it's what I feel. Every record is relevant to that time. Mm -hmm. So some people ask you to do a, oh, you made Wait a Minute in 2003. Can you make that again? I'm like, no, we're not in 2003. Time's changed. Fam, it's, you know, so it changes. And with the Like You Never record, we just made the record. And to me, that's how I'm going to make things from now on. I'm just going to do what I'm doing, say what I'm saying, express mix, produce, make the music, and put it out. I'm not chasing nobody. I'm not chasing no underground, un, un, no roundabout, no overground, no train station, nothing. Just doing you. Absolutely. That's, how, that's what you're supposed to do. And it's always going to get the response because you, you sign people's heads. So there's people out there loving it, regardless of whether, you, <laughs> regardless of whether or not you're she trying. She has done her research. You're, you're, he's signing people's heads. That's massive. Where did like, you get that? I, did that I, I just know things. I did that at a festival. That's so funny. Oh, you, oh, you must be following my Twitter. <laughs> mm -mm. Follow a lot of things. Mm -mm. But no, but, and what about the documentary? Yes. The documentary, so the girl that did, uh, the woman, sorry, who did uh, the other side of the Dilla documentary for Europe is also doing my documentary, so we're working on that. It's going to be a um, it's going to be a heartfelt process, so it's going to take time, but we're collecting, we're figuring it out. It's going to be nice. Mm -hmm. 
It's going to be nice. Uh, the reason why we're doing that documentary is because nobody, the BBC is never going to turn around and say, do you know what, we need to make a documentary about him. And I've realized that in my career, it's really important, like, when you get to a certain point, that you elect people to be in positions, rather than wait for some funny daddy dude in an office that doesn't know nothing about you to actually say, yeah, we should do this, we should do that. You, we have to do it. What difference does that make to the work you end up with? It makes all the difference. Like making the videos that we made at the moment, they weren't, um, they weren't commissioned by any label, they were commissioned by me. The EP was commissioned by me. It was commissioned, you know, we worked to a certain brief. Mm -hmm. And I think it's all about following your own instincts. Absolutely. Like for me, that's the, the main thing for me is you gotta follow, after a while, if you know what you're doing, mm -hmm. then you need to follow that instinct. For every five steps forward, I take 10 steps back. I love the music, but can't see where it's at. Strictly fast food run-ins. How are we supposed to adapt? How are you supposed to raise kids to that? And I ain't blaming no one. It starts with me. Before heart failure, there's clogged arteries. We were usually on point, no artery, created to a fault like an art degree, but something happened. It's kind of like a takeover. The sampling law changed the looping of the breaks over. Though corporate, there's nothing pretty about this makeover. Pay for play and now you influence what we say? We even let you walk off with the DJ. It's hard to hear a single scratch on record these days. Chugga, 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 chugga. Beside the cliches, somebody's got to keep up traditions. It's a new day, but still something is missing. I mean, I'm like you never. Coming from an age where it wasn't so internet heavy, do you feel you found yourself around the digital markets and you've tapped into all your social networks, would you say? I would say I've always been that, that dude. Okay. So uh, 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 there's one person in particular, uh, a girl called Belen from Little One Entertainment who absolutely, she put me on. She was like, you need to get a website. You need to do something. So this, this is early 2000s. And we've been together since then. And um, since I, since she got me on the laptop thing, and was like, look, you know, you need to speak to your fans. And I said, huh, what's this? Yugoslavia, who are you? What's going on? When I started realizing that, MySpace, I was on it. On that. I was on it. MySpace, I, I had, yeah, I'm, I'm not even gonna boast about it. I was on it. Every single medium, I'm on it. Facebooks. Twitter, I love it. I, but Chris, the reason, the reason why I say it's, um, it's important for me is because my brand and my whole vibe is set upon being a regular person. So it's set about, it's a, it's if you come into a dance with me on stage, I'm likely to catch your eye and speak to you, not be on some super duper, yes, I am Prince. You know what I mean? Look at my jacket. Look at my, look at my collar. Look at my guitar. None of that. It's like, it's, it's, it's a regular people. Let's jam down vibe so to me social media is perfect because I want people to come to me the only problem with that is that you get some funniness you get some people that come to you with some stuff where you're just like you really think I'm sitting here washing dishes wanting to talk to you talk nonsense or oh you don't like my record why are you telling me <laughs> like really keep that to you you know tell your mum <laughs> but um you know Nice. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. About to... See, that's real. That's, that's, that's how we do it around here. <laughs> yeah? Some of you driving limousines, that's my ride. That's, that's my ride right there. Yeah? <laughs> you see, that's my ride. They're waiting for me. They're waiting for me. <laughs> All right, let's, get, let's, let's hurry up. up. Yeah, let's hurry up. All right, let's, we'll, we'll make this snappy, yeah, make then. snappy then. So all the social medias that you just mentioned, yeah. obviously it, it's great that you've got them, but other people want to know what they are so they can hook up. Right. Sorry. Some other people want their head signed. So um, are you killing me today? <laughs> you, I have to say you are the most researched. This is the most researched I've ever, any, any, anyone's ever been. Like you just, you, like, I'm sure you've got stories from my mum. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, we, yeah, we won't. Um, my Twitter is Thai Music, T-Y Music. Facebook is Thai, um, Thai you can find me on Thai. Uh, what other medium is there? Oh. Have you got Instagram? Oh, Thai Musical, love that. Instagram's dangerous, though. Instagram be dangerous. Instagram's dangerous. Like, 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I follow a few girls. To keep it real. Couple of likes. Couple. Here and there. Couple. So that's that's you covered for social networking. Yeah, for now. Um, the website is timemusic.co.uk. Please join up for my uh, mailing list because we're going to be mailing, letting people know certain things, what we're doing. Um, there's definitely giving um, particular people that follow us more brands. We've got t-shirts coming, yeah. websites coming. Uh, yeah, got some things coming. Nice. I think that pretty much wraps up who Ty is, what he does and what he's doing oh. in the next... Oh, no, it doesn't. Sorry. So, the other side of me that we haven't covered <laughs> is the production side. The music yes. side. So um, I set up this company, this um, this organisation on Facebook called the Beat In, which is basically 1,500, no, 1,700 different producers that communicate and speak to each other. Mm -hmm. We all do the same. We like I might put a sample up. They, everybody chops that, makes beats. From that, people have been winning competitions, remixing different people, blah 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 blah. Stuff's going on. And and the point of about that was that's the culture. The culture is people are into something yeah but they're into something so they're not just into someone's records they're into uh the process that there's a million and one people that sit at home with a laptop with a computer with a sampler with a drum machine making music mm -hmm. and those people are just as qualified as i am or as any other artist mm -hmm. but obviously we only focus on the artist but everybody's an artist and that's one thing that i want to really push is one come and join the beat in on facebook and two, just don't give up your dreams. Like people told me, oh, you know, you can never be a rapper. You can never do this. Uh, it, there's no money in it. There's blah, blah, blah. And it's like, actually, guess what? I'm one of the only people that's actually stayed with my dream and did what I did. And it's possible. But do the work. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I would say is do the work and don't get gassed. I said that to you earlier, right? Yeah. Don't get gassed. Don't, just because... Girls are looking at you nice. Don't get gassed by that. Just because my driver's driving off. Bro, oh, man's getting aggy with it. Okay. <laughs> Believe in your dreams. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> That's all there was to it. He's had to run, but we're still here. So, you know, we're just going to say goodbye to him. And if you need to hear anything else, tune in. <laughs>